four stocks high in my watch list that I'm looking to buy. I'm gonna go through each of these, look at their valuation and tell you the stock price I'm looking to add these stocks to my watch list. Three of these companies are dividend paying stocks, but one of them is not, but it still happens to be one of my largest positions within my portfolio. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this video, so make sure you stay tuned throughout the entirety of it. And show some appreciation by hitting that like button down below, subscribe to the channel so you're notified anytime we drop new content, and let's jump into it. Hey everyone, Mark Rusin here, back for another video. As always, I'm a CPA and not a financial advisor, so please do not take this as financial advice. And before we begin, let me thank today's video sponsor, which is The Motley Fool. The Motley Fool has a ton of great resources and products available for investors of all different levels. And right now, if you go to fool.com forward slash mark, you could sign up to receive their 10 best stocks to buy right now. When it comes to investing and managing your own portfolio, it's so important to stay ahead of the game. You wanna be ready on a moment's notice for when opportunities present themselves. This means performing due diligence on stocks that you potentially want to own, but maybe not at today's price, at a lower price. So you need to build out your watch list and do the work ahead of time. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're looking at four stocks that I have high on my watch list that I'm looking to add to my position. Some of these stocks I already own and just be adding to those positions. Some of these stocks would be brand new additions to my portfolio. So with that being said, let's dive right in, taking a look at four stocks high on my watch list, beginning with the first one, a non-dividend payer, and that is Alphabet, stock ticker G-O-O-G-L. So as I already mentioned, it's not a dividend stock, but it also happens to be my largest individual holding within my portfolio. I don't just invest in dividend stocks. I have a number of growth stocks that are out there as well. And you also may know that Alphabet has the two largest search engines in the world today. They have Google search and they have YouTube. The company currently has a market cap of $1.8 trillion. And over the past 12 months, the stock is up 45%. If you've been following the company for any amount of time or any of the news, then you know that 45% has been hard to get to because they have just completely flubbed their rollout of artificial intelligence. The complete marketing that's gone behind that has been a complete disaster, but I still don't wanna count this company out when it comes to actually rolling out their artificial intelligence. Now to their credit, they're actually developing their own AI platform. Whereas Microsoft, and there's no right or wrong answer, but Microsoft, it's not like they developed ChatGPT, they went out and invested in OpenAI, which owns ChatGPT. However, I'm not willing to count Alphabet out of the AI race just yet. Plus, news recently broke that Apple was partnering with Google to utilize their AI software on the new AI-powered iPhones in the near future. So that's the news. Let's take a closer look at the company's results. Currently, when looking at the balance sheet, it is quite stable as they have a current ratio of 2.1 and a quick ratio of 1.94. Anything above one is a very solid balance sheet, but two is simply fantastic. Now let's take a closer look at the income statement and the statement of cash flows. Revenues are at $307.4 billion, an 8.7% increase year over year. Operating income came in at $84.3 billion over the past 12 months, a 12.6% increase, which inclined that the company became more efficient in the most recent year. Thus, operating margins are at 27.4% roughly 100 basis points higher than the prior year. Earnings per share came in at $5.80, which is a 27.5% increase year over year. Looking at free cash flow, the company is a free cash flow printing machine. As they had a free cash flow of $69.5 billion, a 16% increase year over year, with a free cash flow margin of 22.6%, an improvement over the free cash flow margin of 21.2% in the prior year. So overall, even with all of these hiccups and the flubbed rollout of AI, the company is still firing and doing quite well. So now that's past results. Let's take a look at what analysts believe is coming up ahead. Looking out ahead, we could see that revenues are still expected to grow around 10% per year on average over the next three years, with earnings per share having a growth rate of around 16% on average over that same period. So with that, let's look at valuation. With 2024 earnings per share expected of $6.80, that gives us a forward price to earnings multiple of 21.6 times. Actually not that high compared to other mega cap technology companies. 
Over the past five years, Alphabet has traded at a PE multiple of 25.7 times, giving them a peg ratio of 1.35. So where am I looking to add to my position? Again, this is my largest single stock position in my portfolio, so I need to take a much more patient approach. So with that, I'm looking to add to Google, and I have it on my watch list at about $130. That's actually the same spot I last added to my position. So $130 is what I'm watching for when it comes to Alphabet. Stock number two on our watch list is American Express, stock ticker AXP. American Express is the luxury financial services company. When you ask people which credit card is the most luxurious, most of the time, they will say American Express, and they're right. The company currently has a market cap of $160 billion, and over the past 12 months, the stock is up 40%. As you may know, credit card debt levels are at historic highs, and many more people are moving away from cash and moving more to that little plastic credit card, which as volumes increase, it helps the likes of Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. In addition, American Express happens to be a Buffett darling. This is actually one of his longest held positions right behind Coca-Cola. American Express has 141 million active cards across the globe. Although Visa and MasterCard have performed better, AXP might be the better stock to have on your watch list to buy right now. Let's take a closer look at company results. First, looking at the balance sheet, which again looks quite stable as they have a current ratio of 1.4 and a quick ratio of 1.4 as well. Again, anything above one is very good. Now let's take a closer look at the income statement and the statement of cash flows, where we see revenues of $55.6 billion over the past year, a 9.7% increase from prior year, operating income of $10.6 billion, a 7% increase, and operating income margin at 19% flat, a 50 basis point decline from the prior year. EPS came in at $9.06 per share, which was a 10.2% increase year over year. Looking at free cash flow, the company generated $17 billion. That happened to be down 11.5% from prior year. And free cash flow margin, very high at 30.6%. So overall, the company operates very efficiently and management is doing a great job there, evidenced by their very high free cash flow margin. Now let's take a look at the growth over the next three years. As you can see here, revenues are still expected to grow around 9% per year. EPS growth over those next three years on average is about 15%. So figures are very close to that of Google that we just looked at. So with that, now let's take a look at valuation, where analysts have a 2024 EPS expectation of $12.86 per share, which equates to a forward price to earnings multiple of 17.2 times, which is slightly higher than their five-year average of 16.2 times. But still, the PE that you're paying compared to the growth that you're getting is very favorable for investors as they currently have a peg ratio of 1.08. So valuation isn't crazy right here, but when it comes to my watch list and my buy price, I wanna see shares of American Express back below 200, right around that $185 level. With that, if they come down to that level, they will be trading at a forward PE of about 14 and a half times, well below their five-year average, and the peg ratio will be well below one meaning what I'm paying in terms of PE multiple, I'm getting great value in terms of the growth that's expected. So 185 is that target price for me to add to shares of AXP. And that leads us to stock to watch number three, which is Intel Corporation, stock ticker INTC. Intel's really been a mixed bag over the past 12 months. It's been a very hated stock and a stock that people have loved because the performance has been there, but it's been a bit of a roller coaster over the past few years, to say the least. The company currently has a market cap of $178 billion, and over the past 12 months, shares are up 44%. When it comes to Intel, this is a name you gotta have a lot of patience with, and it's a name I've been very critical of over the years, especially in old videos. But that doesn't mean I have to turn a blind eye. There's always a price I'm willing to pay for certain stocks out there. But the reason I was critical back then was so much mismanagement that the company had, missing expectations badly, guiding very poorly. So with the company changing strategy and we're starting to see some signs of a turnaround, this is a name that I don't want to buy right now, but definitely wanna have high on my watch list. And the reason being is if they can in fact get things turned around, get this foundry business up and running under the current leadership of CEO Pat Gelsinger, there could be huge returns in this once darling of a stock. So let's take a look first at company results. 
The balance sheet is actually quite stable, believe it or not, as they have a current ratio of 1.5 and a quick ratio of one flat. So the balance sheet is okay right now. Looking at the income statement and cash flows, we could see revenues of $54.2 billion over the past 12 months, a 14% decline from the prior year. Operating income came in at just $31 million, which is a major decline from the $2.5 billion they reported in the prior year and the $22.1 billion the year before that. Much of that, though, has to do with the $25 billion decline in revenues over the past few years as we have seen a fall in computer sales. Those are hopefully looking to rebound and then add on top of that foundry coming around the corner. Operating income margin is essentially nil at the moment. In terms of earnings per share, the company generated $1.05, which was a huge decline again from the $1.84 they reported the year prior. Free cash flow was actually negative at $14.3 billion. So again, looking at those results there, there's really nothing great to find. But again, those are backwards looking. We want to always look forward as investors. Can they in fact turn things around? But at the same time, you could see why many investors are terrified about the stock. Just look at those results that I just read off there. But now let's look at the vision coming forward and the growth that's expected from analysts covering the stock. Looking out over the next three years, revenues are expected to rebound back to growth with the company having a three-year average growth rate of nearly 10% per year. EPS growth rate over the next three years is set to explode as analysts have a three-year average annual growth rate of roughly 40%. So with that, let's look at valuation. Analysts have a 2024 EPS target of $1.35, which equates to a forward PE multiple of 31.1 times. You go out one year further, the PE drops all the way down to 18.8 times. Over the past three years, the stock has traded an average PE multiple of roughly 20.2 times, which would give a peg ratio of 0.78 right now using the 2024 estimates. High PE, but solid growth. Again, those are estimates. But if they come to fruition, the price you're paying today, even if the stock does fall, it's very cheap relative to the growth that's expected to come. Those are the types of stocks I am constantly looking for. I'm a long-term investor, not looking for these short-term get-rich type high-risk schemes like that. Nope. Looking for great valuation, great entry points for long-term wealth preservation. So where do I want to buy this stock? Well, for me, again, I got to be very patient with this stock. So I could take an approach of selling some cash-secured puts. And the area that I'm looking to do that is right around $35 per share. I don't want to buy it where it's at right now. But if we see Intel shares fall $35 or below that, I will definitely be adding a small position to my portfolio. And that leads us to stock to watch number four, which is Pfizer, stock ticker PFE. Pfizer happens to actually be the cheapest stock, both in terms of valuation and in terms of share price that we're looking at on today's list. The company currently has a market cap of $156 billion. And over the past 12 months, the stock is going the wrong direction as it is down 32%. Pfizer is another name very similar to that of Intel that we have to have a lot of patience with. So the Pfizer of old isn't necessarily a bad company. We just have to take a different approach to it. During the pandemic, we saw huge growth in revenues, but that was all related to the pandemic. Now, those vaccines are pretty much gone now. We have seen the Pfizer of old. L revenues have fallen, but now we're back to analyzing the portfolio as it is right now and what's coming down the pipeline. So with that, let's take a look at the financials, beginning with the balance sheet, which currently sits with a current ratio of 0.9 and a quick ratio of 0.6. So not a great, not a very stable balance sheet at the moment. There's plenty of room for improvement moving forward. Looking at the income statement and the cash flows, revenues over the past 12 months have been $58.5 billion, a 42% decrease from the prior year as expected given the pandemic-related products that dropped off. Operating income has come in at $5.3 billion, another massive drop-off, which equated to operating income margin of 9%, which was 39.7% in the prior year. But again, all related to those vaccine sales. Earnings per share for the company over the past 12 months, $1.84, a 72% decrease year over year. And then turning our attention over to free cash flow, the company generated $4.8 billion, an 82% decline year over year. And that equated to free cash flow margin of just 8.2%. So again, this is a company that's in a period of transition. But if you're out there and you're value hunting, this is definitely a name to take a second look at. So now let's take a further look forward. 
And looking over the next three years, revenues are still expected to grow in the mid to low single digits from here. EPS growth over those same three years has an average growth rate of about 16%, so not bad there. With that, let's take a look at valuation. Analysts believe in 2024, the company will generate EPS of $2.22 per share, which equates to a forward PE multiple of 12.4 times. Over the past five years, shares have traded closer to 13.9 times. So Pfizer is actually a name that I've added to in the past month or so, but very, very small position. And those of you that are subscribed to my Investor's Edge newsletter, the premium version, you see my entire portfolio, all my buys, all my sells, every position that I have value in right now. So you know that it is very low on my list. And I would like to add a little bit more because it is a very cheap stock. And I believe in the turnaround story moving forward. And I think a lot of what's old about Pfizer is being discounted improperly. So I would like to see Pfizer drop down in that $25 range. If we can get Pfizer under $25, I believe that's a great spot to take another nibble out of PFE shares. Again, not lump sum, just taking very small amounts because this is very long-term type of project here. There's a turnaround story and turnaround stories can take time. So I'm being much more patient and much smaller amounts of capital are being attributed here. So with that being said, we've just taken a look at four stocks high on my watch list. One, non-dividend. Three are dividend payers. Pfizer's that big value. Intel is going to be that turnaround story with Foundry. But then you have Alphabet, big time growth, but at a discount. And then lastly, or the second one we looked at was American Express. It really just sits in the coattails of Visa and MasterCard. But if we can get that stock price down just a little bit, I think there's great value to be had in that company there. In the comment section down below, let me know of these four stocks, which would you say is highest on your watch list? And let me know what other stocks are high on your watch list as well. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you smash that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.